Welcome back to CGIU Stories 2011. I'm here with Matthew Morantz. Welcome, Matthew. Thank you. Um, and and I know that you're from McGill University. Uh, is this your first time at CGIU? This is my second time at okay. CGIU. Great. When was your first? Last year? Yeah, I was here. Uh, well, I was at Miami at the CGIU in uh, 2010 at Miami. That's great. What was your experience like? There? I had a I had an amazing time. Um, I came in not really knowing what to expect because I had never been to um, to anything any kind of conference in the states before, mm -hmm. and um, I, I I was completely unaccustomed to this kind of like scale of organization, and uh, I was blown away by both Bill Clinton's uh, enthusiasm and all the other speakers' inspiration. That's great. So you have a pretty unique commitment, and I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. But first of all, just kind of want to hear how you learned about the problem that you're addressing and what that problem is. Yeah, so um, the problem has, has a couple of aspects. Um, in, in general, um, the problem relates to the treatment of persons with disabilities, not only in North America, but across the world. And um, learning about the problem was uh, a process that I went through um, in high school and that everybody else goes through in high school. Um, seeing the way that uh, persons with disabilities are integrated into the society. Mm -hmm. In North America, uh, we do a very good job of um, tailoring social programs to the needs um, of persons that have different needs than um, the typical individual in society. Mm -hmm. um, in other parts of the world, it's a little bit different. The, their, their needs are not always um, as well met mm -hmm. as here. Um, the problem that we identified was that there were certain aspects of um, society that were what we call socially disabling. So society was imposing a disability on the, uh, on the individual. One of the things that was really dear to our heart was um, the idea of including children with special needs into athletic programs, into physical fitness programs. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially in the face of the tremendous um, epidemic of childhood obesity um, that has struck children with um, disabilities and persons with disabilities um, in North America. If you look at the obesity rates um, in, in Canada and the states of uh, children with autism, for example, they're sky high. Um, and that's not even sky high um, compared to the baseline. That's sky high even compared to uh, the, the epidemic levels that obesity rates are at in the states. Um, so how did you start? How did you start to work on this issue? Um, so we, we started off just getting involved in our own community. Uh -huh. um, we, I'm, I'm, um, I go to school in Montreal, and so we got university students in our own community involved um, by training them, getting a community um, outreach volunteer to come and provide them with adapted swimming instruction um, training, and then getting them into the pool once a week for only 30 minutes, a very small time commitment for each university volunteer. And um, the program kind of grew from there. Uh, so our first year we had five kids, the next year 10 kids. Um, when I came to CGIU we had 25 kids and that was last year. Mm -hmm. um, and this year we have 300. So wow. That's we've a grown, huge yeah, we've grown 600% in the last year. And um, we've, uh, we've started chapters in eight different cities in Canada. Uh, and um, this year, the value of our commitment, that is the amount of money that we've saved parents of children with special needs that are, by the way, uh, typically poor, um, underserved persons in Canadian society, is approximately $150,000. Wow. How is that possible? Um, the amount of money that it costs to provide private training to a child or um, to anybody else for that matter, I see. Um, is huge. So you guys are providing that service? We're providing that things. service at, a, at um, a nominal nominal cost, yeah. That's terrific. So tell us a little bit about the aspects of your program. Sure, okay, so the idea is that um, you take a university student, um, the typical profile of a university student is that they're um, overqualified in a bunch of different areas and some of their training isn't being utilized. Um, a lot of students that I've met, a lot of my friends, have backgrounds in swimming. Mm -hmm. Swimming is a really great sport for, um, to get persons with disabilities involved in because it's low impact, 
the chances of injury are very low mm -hmm. once you know how to do it. Yeah. Um, so we get students that have a background in swimming, that maybe have been part of a swimming club before, train them, and then put them in the pool with uh, a child with special needs. And um, so it hits on a bunch of different levels. It hits on the idea that we should be protecting um, the most at-risk youth towards water safety um, and towards uh, submersion injuries. So children with special needs are 10 times more likely to drown than um, typical children. Okay. And uh, it also gets them doing something physical, physical. doing some kind of yeah. physical activity, getting them fit, teaching them something that they can do all across their life course and increasing their, their, their lifelong physical fitness outcomes. That's great. Um, so I know you brought a couple of props. Yes. Tell so, us about them. Yeah. So I just wanted to emphasize what, what we do. So, <laughs> so um, this, was, this was a photo taken this year of uh, our, our um, chapter in Montreal. So as you can see, we've got 75 kids and 75 university students. And I mean, I just, I just wanted to emphasize the point that um, if you get involved in, in something um, that involves kids, it's very hard to um, not give all of your time. It becomes very, very addictive. <laughs> and uh, this is just a map showing where we've grown in Canada. So you can see that we've got chapters all across um, all across the country, and uh, I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank um, CGIU and to thank them for all their support because they've been amazing, and this wouldn't have been possible without their help. And we're just so thankful. Any, any plans to expand into the U.S.? Yeah. So uh, we actually I didn't talk about the the international outreach program. So last year at CGIU, uh, I met a girl called Sarah Mankara who um, operates a program called Empowerment Through Integration. And the idea is that they uh, go into Lebanon uh, where the um, services offered to persons with disabilities, especially uh, blind persons, um, the level of service is very low. And so they provide um, services that increase the inclusion of uh, this, these types of populations. Yeah, we, we actually spoke to Sarah earlier oh, today. Oh, great, yeah. yeah. And uh, so she's running a fantastic program. We approached her and we asked if we could help in any way. And uh, one of the things that they, they were trying to do, because Lebanon is mostly a coastal area, um, is provide swimming instruction. And so this year we're sending over one of our fellows, um, a, uh, an instructor that's been trained through our programs, um, to Lebanon to provide swimming instruction for that camp and also to open up a Making Waves chapter in Lebanon. And we're doing the same thing in Mauritius. Wow, that's yeah. great. Well, we're really excited to hear how that goes. and Yeah, I'm really excited to report on that too. <laughs> Thank you so much for all the amazing work you're doing. Thank you, Amanda.